Now that the pickup is complete, let's move on to the next step. I'll explain my process in more detail since that is what interests you the most. The next step is obvious. I went with a headless guitar style bridge for the tuning machines and nut for this build. This choice complements the aesthetic of the lap steel, as large headstocks can appear cumbersome. On the other side of the instrument, I'm using a typical saddle, and this requires a spacer block underneath the headstock tuning machines so that the strings sit parallel to the fretboard. I don't need extreme precision for these measurements, but I do my best to position the block as accurately as possible. The excess will be sanded off later, and there is a sufficient adjustment in the headstock tuning machine bridge to accommodate any error. You may notice that I follow this particular process frequently. I combine two pieces first and then mill through the joint later. This approach ensures that I do not depend solely on a glue joint for precision. The next step will be making the fretboard. Although it's not an actual fretboard, it still needs inlays placed in specific spots to help the player find the correct position and play with accurate pitch. The CNC is the ideal tool for this work. Not only does it create impeccably clean inlay geometries, it also creates impeccably accurate fret inlays. The interesting material properties of wood make it a challenge anytime accuracy is required. My techniques differ from many other luthiers in this aspect. My goal is to create something that is not only physically satisfying, but dimensionally precise at the same time. The engineer and the artist must work hand in hand to achieve art that is also functional. I'm using epoxy for the inlay, which differs from my typical strategy. For this purpose, the material properties match what I'm trying to do quite well. Thank you. 
to make surface sanding easier, later on, I attach the material to some scrap stock. This also helps keep the material flat while the resin cures and shrinks a bit. In order to enhance both the appearance and function of the instrument, I plan to incorporate mother of pearl powder and mica flakes into the resin coloring process. These materials are available in a range of colors, but for this particular project, I will be using a complementary pearl colored option. It's a simple matter of working the resin into the recesses and allowing it to cure. Next, any excess is carefully sanded off. As you can see, even I can be vulnerable to mistakes. The piece of scrap material that I used did not offer sufficient friction against the thickness sander's belt. As a result, the material kept slipping, causing excessive sanding. Sadly, I'll have to redo this part, a frequent issue in my workshop. If you're a maker, there may come a time when you encounter challenges. It's crucial to keep in mind that skills develop through repetition. When your desired result is of a high standard, it's necessary to iterate through the project, even if it's uncomfortable or challenging. This is a vital step towards achieving success. I hope I've done a better job of describing what I'm doing while also providing some information about material properties and how they function together in these systems. The engineering aspects of Luthery fascinate me. I consider them to be a combination of art and science. And I hope they fascinate you too. Thanks for watching.